Hey guys, so last time we were doing most of the array work uh, that we were discussing. We got to the third row here and we just stopped. So I'm going to go ahead and keep doing that and I'm going to try to move faster. I know I'm taking a long time. I'm sorry. So what I'm going to do is have a set of numbers. Let's say 4, 5, 6, 2, 34, 67. Let's make this a little bigger. There we go. And then we can say whatever numbers you want. I'll just randomly type numbers from my keyboard here. There we go. Whatever. Okay. So w the function we have gotten to was this one sort 1D array. And this is pretty straightforward. You take a 1D array and it sorts it. And um, the sorting. Uh, why did I do that? I'm sorry. Here. The sorting in ascending order. They are always in ascending order, right? But that's not a problem. So create indicator. Let's go ahead and see. Uh, I can do it this way. And run. There it is. It arranged my array from lowest to highest. See? Just this random array was arranged from lowest to highest. Now, what if I want it the other way around? Well, if you look at the end here, we have two functions, reverse and we have rotate. Uh, what we want to do, oh, no, we don't want to rotate. We want to reverse. So if I take this array and I just reverse it, creating a indicator for that, and I'm just going to stretch that, what's going to happen is it just reversed the order, and there we go. Now you have them in descending order. So it's that easy. You just put this block with this block after it, and you have the descending order. Now, what does rotate do? Well, rotate takes in an array on its second point, and then what it does is it rotates it around a single point. Um, now, you, you might be trying to figure out, okay, what does that mean? Well, that means that we can have a mix now. So let's say, okay, I want to rotate about the fourth number, right? And then create a indicator. So here's what happens. There we go. So as you can see, what ended up, we are doing, uh, we are doing this to the initial, not the reversed sequence. Let me do it to the reverse sequence so that we keep moving in order. So it, does, it won't be confusing. There we go and let me run it. So what ended up happening is that the fourth the fourth number, right? The the system was moved up four squares. I know it's called reverse, but what happened is that this this was moved up 1 2 3 4 squares. Here, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, this was moved up from 0 to 4. So this is point 0, point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4. It was moved up to this point 4. And then this this, the rest of it is rotated around to be put up here, right? And so we're not just inserting blanks. We're moving along. Um, you will probably never, ever use this, but there it is. If you do, now you know how and why. Uh, so we did this. We did this. We did the sorting. Let's do the splitting or searching. Let's do the searching. So search. Search has three inputs and one output. First, you put in a 1D array. If you notice, everything else gives you an n-dimensional array, right? N-dimensional array. Or it tells you, an, see, n-dimensional here. Here it just says n-dimension again. Here it just says array. So, But this has to be a 1D array. If it is not a 1D array, you need to reshape it into a 1D array. So in this case, we do have a 1D array. There it is. And then it tells us what are we searching for? Which element are you searching for? Let's say we are searching for the element 0, the number 0, or whatever it is. And then we can tell it where to start, but default is 0. Whenever you see these parentheses, that's the default. So default is 0. And then what it gives me is the index of the element. It tells me where it is. It doesn't it tells me where it is. So where is 0 in this array? 0 is at position 3. And that's true. 0, 1, 2, 3. And there it is. Now, I did discuss this. What if I said, okay, I want the number 100. What do you think will show up here? Now, it will not show me 0 because 0 means here. It will show you a negative 1 number. 
and that is amazing because now you can easily okay so check if there's a hundred and then you can just take this number and check if it's negative if it is negative that means the number does not exist in this array right so that's what this is used for the last thing is splitting of an array and that's very simple so you just take it in take in the array and then you tell it okay where do you want to be split let's say we're looking for the number zero and I want to be split wherever zero is right and that's going to be from 0 to whatever this, from minus 1 to wherever this is. And it gives me two arrays, first subarray and second subarray. So basically the before and the after. The before and the after. Now you might be asking, okay, where does it go? Well, if you look on it, uh, it tells you divides the array and returns the two portions with the element of index at the beginning of the second subarray. So we're cutting wherever 0 is and 0 will be a part of the second subarray. So let's look at these two subarrays. Here's the first, here's the second. We can put them side by side and run. So there we go. Here's the first, here's the 0. So the first is 5, 4, 2, and here's the rest, 0, 1, 2, 3. So the question is, okay, what if I put an impossible number? I get a minus 1. How does it cut it at minus 1? Well, if I run it, there it is. It just it knows because minus one is a negative number so we don't need to worry about that um, there we go so the rest of these functions and I know I said I don't want to talk about them because they're uh, I don't want to say they're not important they're just more complex and more mathematical uh, uh, we will not need to worry about these probably unless you're doing something that requires fanciness that's that's literally what I'm gonna call it um, but what it does what they do is these these take in uh, an array and then what it does is that it takes the x-axis and it can basically kind of spread them apart uh, same thing here but on the y-axis um, that goes into two-dimensional uh, arrays and uh, and you basically use this when dealing with graphs, not with an array as an array. Uh, this here puts arrays together in a special way or order, and this breaks them apart at specific uh, uh, intervals and gives you those outputs. And then this one is uh, basically it rearranges, it transposes. If, if you've ever dealt with transposing, what this does is it transposes uh, arrays. Uh, it's the same thing that is done in Excel, basically. That's the best example I can give. Now, we have not discussed clusters yet, so I don't want to get uh, too far into it. But what a cluster is, as opposed to... Let's do it, let's do it. Here's a cluster. Clusters are... Hmm. Okay, maybe I should keep this for a second video okay let's not do clusters okay so back to arrays so as I said other than this you have a function in numeric here which adds array elements together and this one multiplies them together so these will be important uh, for example adding array elements would be important in for example getting the average of an array right so let's take our first array and okay let's go back here let's cut this at zero Let's run it and let's go see. So we have 542, right? And I want to get the average. So how do I get the average of that? That's going to be here in our first substring. Well, it's not that hard. All you do is you add all the elements, right? Add the elements right there. And then if I go to my arrays and I divide by the total size of this, and I just go to my numeric and do the division. So I divide the sum of them all by the total, and that gives me the average. Create indicator and run. The average is 3.666 for this one. Now what's the average for the second subarray? Well, that's not hard either. Instead of connecting this to this here, we can connect this to the second. This is the second. And run that. There you go, the average is 44.76 of all these numbers here. So this is another reason you use arrays, right? So it puts all these numbers easily accessible, and then you can manipulate 
as as you need. Um, but as I said, there's a lot of other things you could do. Now, a few things you could do with the math is I could take an array. I'm going to take the first array, and I could just do add to this array. And now what I could add, I believe, uh, oh, I could add a number, number one. What does this mean? Well, what this means is that it's going to add one to every single number. And I'm going to move there. I'm going to just deal with this uh, array. And I'll move it over here to the side so you can see what's going on. And then run that. And it just added one to each one of its its numbers, right? And it doesn't just have to be adding. I could multiply. What if I multiply this by a constant? Uh, uh, when I do it this way, as you can see, it gives me an array system here. And I don't want to do it by an array, so I have to force it to do it by a number. A number will do it for all of them. And if, if it was an array, it would multiply them uh, with the positions within the array. So you'd need to do some experiments always before working with it, but I'll show you. So here we multiply it by 2. 6 becomes 12, 5, 10, 3, 6. Now, what if I do something drastic? What if I did multiply by an array? So I'm going to multiply this by itself, which is basically squaring it, right? So I could do this this way and then create an indicator. What is that going to look like? Well, uh, 144, 136. 144, 136, multiplying each one by itself. You could also have used the square function right here, which is much easier to use. Right? And then just click, click, and there we go. Um, let's run this. So there's many, many things you could do. Uh, there's a lot of functions that you should like, um, that you should, you should, well, you'll never know how many things there are in here. There's so many things, so many things. Um, I actually have a question right now. What if I were to multiply here by an array? Oh, oh okay. Let's show this here, here. What if I was to multiply this, right, by an array that is shorter than what it was? So if I come here, go to array, delete from array. Now the typical setting for delete from array is delete the last, because this is last number, length one. Uh, and I want the array with the subset deleted, basically without, not with. Uh, and then do that. I believe... I know we already went over this, but I always do this. I always like double check my work, make sure. So yeah, so I want to multiply this by 1210 and see what happens. And I think that was the answer right there. Oh no, there's the answer. So there we go. I multiplied this by 1210 only without the six. And what it does, apparently it takes the smallest one, right? It does it based on the smallest uh, the smallest uh, array, right? So now you know. See, this, this is basically how I learn. I just go ahead, try messing with it. Um, now, one thing I would like to talk about, which I haven't, is arrays that are not, be, as I said, arrays could be anything. In this case, they could be text, right? I could have text arrays, and I could just type text in here, um, let me just do this to be one second here, uh, size to text, there we go. There, so I can just type in text if I want in here, it's fine. You, you don't have to run the system based on only numbers. And then I can come here, create, oh, create an indicator, which will look just like a normal array, except that this is text. And uh, the system would function the exact same way, right? The system can function just as I'm functioning in all these. Well, positions remain as positions, but you instead of using word, instead of using numbers, I can use words for like searching and doing things. And this is replaced, as you can see. It looks like a chain kind of thing. 
there's another thing to talk about. When you click on a wire, it tells you what this wire contains. So this is a 1D array of string. This is a 1D array of a long 32-bit integer. I haven't gotten into discussing the types of numbers, but this has imposes a limit from here to here. And this is a uh, non-decimal number, right? This here, the double numeric, allows for uh, decimal numbers. So there we go. So this has about 15-digit precision. It's a 64-bit real number, which means it will never, ever end. This is 32-bit, and this is how much it gives you. So this can handle uh, a huge amount of data. Uh, so that's basically it. Plus, as I said, this, this wire gives you 15-digit precision. That's decimal points. So you get up to 15 decimal points. All right. Um, so that's a 1D array. This here, for example, is just the long number. Uh, if I have multiple 1D arrays, it tells you this is a 2D array, this is a 3D array. It knows, and that is important because, like, many, many times you cannot, uh, you cannot put more than, uh, you cannot put different types of arrays together, and it will show an error. Remember the error lines? And if you put your mouse on the error line, it will tell you the error. So um, let's see, what is this saying? It's saying that this is a 2D array because it put them on top of each other. Well, what happens if I stack a 2D array? Well, now if I stack a 2D array, I get a 3D array, right? We, we already discussed this. Let me show you how that works. So there we go. Oh, oh. I just want to see the wire. There it is. So this is a 3D array of all numbers. Um, so as I was saying, what if I were to disconnect this? And if I connect this wire to this wire, right? So now by clicking here, you will see you have connected two arrays that mismatch. Um, it's not telling me, huh? Oh, this is, I'm sorry, guys. I think it's because there's so many connections. It's not working. Uh, let me do it this way. I think when it's one to one, it gives you the error. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So here is it is the dimension of. Oh, it's not saying. Usually it says the dimension of the source is one, and the dimension of. Okay, it's giving the name. That's why it's doing that. Okay. Um, sorry guys. Again, I I know I know I've said sorry already, but um, let us do here. Let's connect this to that and that and show me the help. Thing. And click on this wire again. There we go. Wow. See, you see how big of an error it told me here? So here's the error. And if I stretch this, so the type of the source is a long 32 bit integer number, and the type of the sink is a 1D array of long 32. So basically, it should be a 1D. I'm putting in a number, a long number, and I need to put a 1D array of long numbers. So basically, this needs to be an array. Stuff like that. You guys will learn all this as you play around with the system on your own. Uh, so I definitely recommend you, uh, you do that. All right, guys. I will see you guys in our next episode. Bye.